stand. Bless the Lord who forgives all our sins. His mercy endures forever. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Hear what our Lord Jesus Christ says. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the first and great commandment. The second is like it, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty Father, whose dear Son, on the night before he suffered, instituted the sacrament of his body and blood, mercifully grant that we may receive it thankfully in remembrance of Jesus Christ our Lord, who in these holy mysteries gives us a pledge of eternal life, and who now lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the book of Exodus. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, this month shall mark for you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year for you. Tell the whole congregation of Israel that on the 10th of this month, they are to take a lamb for each family, a lamb for each household. If a household is too small for a whole lamb, it sh shall join its closest neighbor in obtaining one. The lamb shall be divided in proportion to the number of people who eat of it. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a year old male, and may you may take it from the sheep or from the goats. You shall keep it until the 14th day of this month. Then the whole assembled congregation of Israel shall slaughter it at twilight. They shall take some of the blood and put it on the two doorposts and the lentil of the houses in which they eat it. They shall eat the lamb that same night. They shall eat it roasted over the fire with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. Do not eat any of it raw or boiled in water, but roasted over the fire with its head, legs, and inner organs. You shall let none of it remain until the morning. Anything that remains until the morning you shall burn. This is how you shall eat it, your loins girded, your sandals on your feet and your staff in your hand, and you shall eat it hurriedly. It is the Passover of the Lord. For I will pass through the land of Egypt that night, and I will strike down every firstborn in the land of Egypt, both human beings and animals. On all the gods of Egypt, I will execute judgments. I am the Lord. The blood shall be a sign for you on the houses where you live. When I see the blood, I will pass over you, and no plague shall destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. This day shall be a day of remembrance for you. You shall celebrate it as a festival to the Lord. Throughout your generations, you shall observe it 
as a perpetual ordinance. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please join me now in saying the portion of Psalm 116 that's found in tonight's bulletin. I love the Lord because he has heard the voice of my supplication, because he has inclined his ear to me whenever I called upon him. How shall I repay the Lord for all the good things he has done for me? I will lift up the cup of salvation and call upon the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his servants. O Lord, I am your servant. I am your servant and the child of your handmaid. You have freed me from my bond. I will offer you the sacrifice of thanksgiving and call upon the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people, in the courts of the Lord's house, in the midst of you, O Jerusalem. Hallelujah. Have mercy on us, O God, according to your loving kindness. A new commandment I give you, love one another as I have loved you. Have mercy on us, O God, according to your loving kindness. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory to you, Lord God. Now before the festival of the Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The devil had already put it into the heart of Judas, son of Simon Iscariot, to betray him. And during supper, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands, and that he had come from God and was going to God, got up from the table, took off his outer robe, and tied a towel around himself. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that was tied around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered, You do not know now what I am doing, but later you will understand. Peter said to him, You will never wash my feet. Jesus answered, Unless I wash you, you have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, One who has bathed does not need to wash except for the feet, but is entirely clean. And you are clean, though not all of you. For he knew who was to betray him. For this reason he said, not all of you are clean. After he had washed their feet, had put on his robe, and had returned to the table, he said to them, do you know what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for that is what I am. So if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have set you an example that you also should do as I have done to you. 
Very truly I tell you, servants are not greater than their master, nor are messengers greater than the one who sent them. If you know these things, you are blessed if you do them. Now the Son of Man has been glorified, and God has been glorified in him. If God has been glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself and will glorify him at once. Little children, I am with you only a little longer. You will look for me. And as I said to the Jews, so now I say to you, where I am going, you cannot come. I give you a new commandment, that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to, to you, Lord, Lord Christ. Christ. In the name of God, creator, redeemer, and giver of life. Amen. If I were to ask you to make a list of the things you've missed most in this year, this year of distancing, masking, staying home and washing the skin off your hands, what would your list look like? I'll bet hugging would be near the top. It would for me. And how about seeing entire faces, not just eyes? Putting the masks away for good. Now, I hasten to add that we can't do that yet. It's still not safe. So don't say you heard it from me, please. I think, though, that the thing at the top of my list will be meals. Dinner around our dining room table. I miss the closeness of friends gathered for a meal, cooking for our sons and their families, enjoying conversation, good food, smiling faces, laughter. Since vaccine, we've been able to do this a little bit in a limited way, but I pray that the limits will eventually be rendered unnecessary. Meals provide an opportunity to make intimate connection with others. How many first dates involve a meal together? How many family reunions or efforts to get to know a new neighbor? How many celebrations, church suppers, annual meetings, Bible and breakfasts? Shrove Tuesday pancake suppers, and even coffee hours. They all revolve around food and conversation and an effort to be together. They can provide that intimacy that caused Jesus to choose a meal to celebrate his presence with us always even as he ate the Passover meal on that last night with his disciples while forces gathered against him. He transformed that meal for us. He made himself both the host and the food. He became the bread and the wine. His own nourishment that we take into our bodies by grace. Do this in remembrance of me, he said. And so we do. We call this weekly meal Thanksgiving, or in Greek, Eucharist. It brings us together, and it brings us together with him. 
As told in the book of Exodus, a portion of which we read tonight, God's people were enslaved in Egypt, far from their homes, forced to work, poorly treated. God, with the help of Moses, saved them through a meal, the Passover meal. God used a lamb, an innocent lamb, the blood of that slaughtered lamb spread on the doorposts of the houses protected them, and they were able to escape from the Egyptians. A lamb was sacrificed by each family so that they might live and not be struck down by God's power as he passed over. And so they might also be nourished for the journey by the food the lamb provided. And so are we, protected, saved, and nourished by the lamb that was slain, the one who feeds us even now. He lived among us as one of us and still sustains us in love. As he was about to die, he left the table where he and his disciples were eating, and he knelt to wash their feet. This too was intimate. And for the disciples, it was disconcerting. Their leader was serving them in the lowliest, most subservient way. They felt exposed, and one of them was exposed. Jesus could have left them a list of things they should do when he was gone. He could have talked at length about how they should behave and how they should preach and how they should spread God's word. He didn't. He showed them just two things. Do this in remembrance of me every time you come together and love one another as I have loved you. I give you a new commandment, he said, that you love one another, serve one another. Thanks be to God. Fellow servants of our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night before his death, Jesus set an example for his disciples by washing their feet, an act of humble service. He taught that strength and growth in the life of the kingdom of God comes not by power, authority, or even miracle, but by such lowly service. We all need to remember his example. Tonight, then, observing the safety constraints imposed on us by a pandemic, I invite you to observe the washing of feet, that we all may recall whose servant we are and whose example we follow, knowing that what is done for us is also to be done by us to others. For a servant is not greater than his master, nor is one who is sent greater than the one who sent him. If you know these things, blessed are you if you do them.
most loving Lord, who has stooped to wash the feet of your disciples. Accept this, our act of obedience and humble service. Wash us clean from all sin and teach us to serve you in the least of your children, who with the Father and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns ever one God, world without end. Amen. stand. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. For our sins he was lifted high upon the cross, that he might draw the whole world to himself. And by his suffering and death, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who put their trust in him. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, 
who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love, you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you, in your mercy, sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross, and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, even this very night, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, take Eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, drink this, all of you. For this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it, for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also, that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him. In the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. We 
we do not presume to come to this, your table, merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under your table, but you are the same Lord whose nature is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you. And feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. My 